new videos every day. Something about celebrities, you know, that by definition in our culture get a lot of media. And many, many people in our culture pay attention to that media. There's a real, I call it a bread and circus dynamic, but there's a way that the media is used to distract people from a lot of things. But I'm going to use a couple of celebrity events to actually bring a point relevant to my work and relevant to all of our work in terms of challenging psychiatric oppression and thinking about how to help people be alive and well. So we have a couple of recent celebrity events, actually more than a couple, people who uh, died, Anna Nicole Smith, a lot of you are familiar with her story, died, and certainly the role of psychiatry was big in that. More recently, Heath Ledger, broke back mountain fame, died. Autopsy showed at least six heavy-duty psychotropic drugs in his system, surely a major factor in his death, all of those being the major downer kind. Many of them meant to induce sleep. A person has trouble sleeping, they take a sleeping pill. They don't work more than a few days, so you add more and more. This man had oxycodone, hydrocodone, Diazepam, Temazepam, Alprazolam. All those are benzodiazepines. Those are your Xanax, Valium type of drugs. So two heavy-duty downers, pain medication and downers. Three benzodiazepines, highly addictive, highly deranging to the psyche. And then on top of that, Doxylamine, which has, which is really a uh, antihistamine type thing, but it's used to help with sleep supposedly as well. So you got those six drugs, all their various permutations and interactive effects, all poisonous, all toxic. He died because of the availability and his use of these drugs, all of which are commonly used for psychiatric treatment. What's the message with those two people and many others? you get down the road with psychiatry and you end up dead. And if not physically dead like these two celebrities, you end up dead to your life to a large degree. Of course, the other celebrity that's in the news right now, Britney Spears, bless her heart. A lot of history with drug use. That's going to be a problem. There's no pretty picture for dealing with that. The problem is that then you get it, then she gets involved with psychiatry and they talk about dual diagnosis. So first they interpret the drug use as a disease. That's a problem. And then they say a dual disease, which is basically a diagnosis that's put on largely the effects of the drug use. So in her case, you read in the press people talking about how she's surely bipolar and she's got to face her bipolar or whatever. Talked about bipolar on other videos. Effect of the drugs. Not sleeping for three days. That's enough to make anybody psychotic. Drug use, lack of sleep. This is not a biologically or genetically based mental illness. These are real life situations. The problem is that the help afforded there involves committing her against her will and then trying to coerce her into taking more drugs which is called treatment it's pretty clear that the trajectory of that is is that if she continues to involve with psychiatry her life will continue to degrade if she's able to get into a real place of facing her drug addiction and getting that handled then her life will go back on an upward trajectory that's her choice but coercing her into psychiatry and forcibly drug her guarantees that her life's going to be worse. The outcomes in psychiatry are not good. The best outcome for anybody who gets caught up in that label of psychiatry is sort of chronic drug use. 
in a debilitated life for the rest of your life. And on average, the data is, this was in a USA Today article last year, the data anyway is that the average lifespan for someone caught up as a psychiatric patient long term is 25 years shorter than those not. Those aren't good outcomes. I read one comment from one of uh, Britney Spears' doctors in the hospital. It's unbelievable. Dr. Kirstner said, there is a way you can bond with a client even though you are slapping them with something like the 5150. So there's a doctor talking about bonding with a client that she's slapping around with a forced commitment. And she would say the same thing about a forced drugging. 5150 is an involuntary commitment, right? So I'm going to bond with you even though I'm coercing you. Understand that they're called a doctor, but at that point you're a jailer. People bond with their terrorist captive, you know, people who are holding them hostage and tor torturing them. There's all kinds of bonding dynamics, but it's not a healthy relationship. And it's certainly not about, I love you because you're helping me and you got your best interest in for my life. It's more like, how do I keep you from hurting me worse? That's a pathetic statement. It's important to understand that involuntary commitment is incarceration. And that when you move into force and coercion with somebody, you're not a helper. You're a jailer. There's a place for jailers if people are criminals. But it's not about help. Drug use, lack of sleep, intense pain around relationship and child custody. Those are life issues. I don't know this woman. But I do know that getting caught up with psychiatry is a downward spiral because it just means drugs, 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 and then very possibly electroshock. The people that tend to do better are those that eventually extricate from that. Our fifth annual psychedelic Rocky Erickson ice cream social that I've been promoting and encouraging people to look at is about some artists who liberated themselves from psychiatry and especially, most especially, Rocky Erickson, who's performing around the world and he's playing in this documentary and looks so good, exactly because he extricated himself from a history of drug use as well as a history of psychiatry and psychiatric drug use. He's, he really blossomed at the point that he got finally off that last cyprexa, free from psychiatry. Those people sometimes get their life back. So bless Britney Spears. Bless all of you. And watch the Ice Cream Social documentary. Vote for it. Support us. We're going to be moving into the later rounds. And we want to spread the word about allowing creative artists, including celebrities like Britney Spears to be able to go through their dramas without being coerced. And for every celebrity like Britney Spears, there's 1.5 million regular Americans who are involuntarily committed on those 5150s and forcibly ordered to take drugs for diseases they don't really have that create toxic, debilitating conditions inside them and guarantee that they will not recover. I'm tired of it. Woo! <laughs>